السلام عليكم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا so إن شاء الله we'll continue our discussion about the dar al akhir in about ten minutes إن شاء الله and last time we spoke about wasiya how to do your wasiya and what to write in there and how to certify it and and to make it binding إن شاء الله I remember a story about wasiya that happened a long time ago it's a true story. So there was a rich man in one of those of our countries back home, and he had a dog. So when his dog passed away, uh, normally when a person passes away, especially rich families, uh, they invite people to their house, and mashallah, they have a big gathering and, and everything. And in some cases, they would, they would invite a maulana to read Quran, and, and uh, they basically put like some special type of clothes around the place with decorations and, and stuff. Uh, so this is what they did when the dog passed away. Uh, so the man had a dog and, and the man was rich. So when the dog passed away, he invited everyone in the town and they came and uh, they didn't know what was going on. He said, there is janaza, so come. They came and uh, they found the Mawlana reading Quran and like through janaza. So finally, the rich man spoke and he said, well, my dog passed away. And uh, the people were not too happy. So the mayor of the town came to that rich man and he said, well, this is not good, man. You, you make a janaza and for a dog. So the rich man said, well, it, it was a special dog. So he said, it's still a dog. This is not appropriate. This is not nice. You should not have a janaza for him. So the rich man said, I'll tell you a secret. This dog was rich. It had a lot of money. So this dog, before it passed away, it left the wasiyya. So in the wasiyya, uh, he, he put his money. So the, the, the mayor said, well, it's still a dog. It doesn't matter. It's a poor, it's the stupid dog. There is no need for janazah. So the man said, the rich man said, but in the wasiyya, the dog said, we should get half, give half of my money to the mayor. So the mayor said, uh, So what did he say me? Allah showered him with rahmah. The marhum, what did he say? Like now he changed his perspective uh, when the dog left him some money. So this is the story about Wasim. Now we'll talk about something else. Uh, we see janazas all the time. You go to a masjid for Salat al-Jum'ah or any other time, and you see janazah. When you see a janazah, one thing should come to your mind. We spoke about this before. The ulama say that if Malakul Maut, the angel of death, skips you to take someone else, the day will come when he will skip someone else to take you. So know for sure that your turn is coming, but we don't know when. This is the only thing we don't know. But I don't want to, to scare you, but you should always keep this in mind, and this will motivate you always to do uh, good, inshallah. Yaqul al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith about getting another chance to live another day, it's a very good thing, it's a gift from Allah. Why? Yaqul al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in kana muhsinan fal'allahu yazdad, aw musi'an fal'allahu yastatib. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when Allah gives you more time to live, it's a good thing. Because if you're doing good, he gives you the chance to do more good. If you are a bad person and he allows you to live longer, he is giving you a chance to make tawbah. It's a good thing either way. So you should take advantage of this. And the more time you get, the better chance and the closer to Allah you should get. And also uh, you should work to reduce your evil deeds uh, by changing your attitude or by making tawbah. I'm going to give a hadith uh, to illustrate the meaning of this. There is this hadith in a Tirmidhi, it's an authentic hadith. Uh, Two men from the tribe of Qudaha accepted Islam on the same day. So after a few years, one of them met a shaheed. He was a shaheed in one of the battles with the Prophet ﷺ. So he passed away. Then. One year after, the second man who accepted Islam on the same day passed away, naturally. So the first one was a shaheed. The second one died naturally, but a year later. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, 
uh, had a vision, had a dream. رَأَى رُؤِيَا فَرَأَى الَّذِي مَاتَ ثَانِيًا دَخَلَ جَنَّةَ أَوَّلًا So he saw the man who died second, naturally, going to Jannah before the, the other one, the Shaheed. So he was like astonished. He came to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him the story in Salatul Fajr. And the people, the Sahaba, they were also astonished. How come? Because we think that Shaheed is at the top. How come that the second one goes to Jannah first? فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَتَعْجَبُونَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَيَسْأَلْ عَنِ الثَّانِي أَوَلَيْسَ قَدْ صَامَ رَمَضَانِ يعني صام رمضان زيادة عن الشهيد أَوَلَيْسَ قَدْ صَلَّى كَذَا وَكَذَا So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said Why are you surprised? Did the second one, no, did the second one not give the chance to fast an extra Ramadan and pray more namaz than the first one? So if we're talking about five daily namaz by 30 days by 12 months, so we're talking about 1,800 extra salawat, extra namaz. We're not talking about sunnah here, or nafl, or wit. Just the basics, the five daily namaz, that's 1,800 namaz salawat every, every year. So he said he prayed more, he fasted more Ramadan. So this is why the second one was honored first in Jannah. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّ الَّذِي بَيْنَهُمَا كَمَا بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ He said, the, the difference between the ranks in Jannah, the second one who died naturally, who prayed and fasted more, and the second one, Shaheed, is below. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, the distance between them is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. So this is the, uh, the benefit of living longer. Allah is giving you a chance to do more. Uh, the other story, because Wallahi it's very easy to go to Jannah, but people always take it for granted and they waste a lot of opportunities. I'm going to conclude with this story, uh, because I don't want to keep you for a, for a long time. Uh, there was this story mentioned by Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah. Uh, so he said, uh, there was an epidemic. A lot of people died in that epidemic and he said one of them was a daughter of an old man. So she died. He saw her in a dream. He saw her in a vision. And he said, What happened to you in Akhira when you left this world and went to the next life? What happened? She said, We knew but we didn't do. So this is what she said. But he didn't understand. So he went to Maulana the next day and he said, Okay, I saw my daughter in a vision and she said, We knew but we didn't do. So Maulana explained to him like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very easy for us to gain hasanat, to remove our sins, to raise our rank in Jannah, but we take it for granted and we don't do much. So for example, everyone knows if you say SubhanAllah, Allah will plant a tree for you in Jannah. How many Muslims actually do tasbih? Not many. Not many. Because we get busy. Although it's very easy, and the Prophet ﷺ said tasbih is very light on the tongue, but heavy in the scale. But most of the time we don't do it. So we are wasting a lot of hasanat. We know, for example, that Sayyidul Istighfar, this dua, uh, if you say this dua, Allahumma anta rabbi, لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك وعهدك مستطعت أبو لك إلى آخر الدعاء. So an authentic hadith, a very famous hadith, the master of all supplications for istighfar. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in Bukhari, in this hadith basically, in this dua, you basically acknowledge Allah as your only Lord. You admit your sins and your weakness as a human being, and you acknowledge the favors of Allah upon you, and you ask for forgiveness, and you thank Allah for whatever He has given you. Because the life of a Muslim uh, is between two things. A favor from Allah that you are grateful for and a sin that you commit when you become weak and you ask Allah for forgiveness. This is what your life is all about. So the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Bukhari, if you say this dua in the morning and you die before you reach Maghrib, you will go to Jannah straight, no questions asked. If you say this dua at night and you die before the morning, you will go straight to Jannah. No questions asked. And the hadith is basically two lines. It doesn't take even 30 seconds to say. 
But how many people actually say this hadith? It's a guarantee from Allah that if you say this in the morning or in the evening, you are going straight to Jannah. How many say this? Allah Akbar. I would say a very tiny minority keep this in their azkar or in their dua. We know that if you read one letter from the Quran, you will get one hasan. If you say alif, lam, mim, so alif is one, lam one, mim one, and the Prophet ﷺ said, each of them would be multiplied to 10 or more. So you are getting actually thousands of hasanat. How many people do read the Quran? Not many. How many open people open the Quran or if they have the cell phone and they read Quran every day? Uh, not many. Because people are busy, you know, and they get distracted. And the people don't open the Quran except maybe the first day or two of Ramadan. MashaAllah, they're excited, man. Ramadan is here. Third day, khalas. Thank you. I uh, remember asking one of my friends one time, what is the last time you read the Quran, you opened the Mus'haf? He said, last week, I said, mashallah, this is good news, I'm excited. Which surah did you read? He said, well, I didn't read anything. I was looking for my driver's license inside the Quran. <laughs> Big disappointment, right? So if, if someone falls sick and you go visit him, and the malaika would be behind you making dua for you, and and, and you will get all these hasanat. We know all the, the ibadat and all the rewards and so on and so forth. But a lot of people don't take actually the time to do these ibadat, although they are very simple. I'm going to leave you with this uh, uh, hadith and to see how many hasanat we are wasting. The Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith that whoever makes dua for Muslims, that Allah will forgive them. Allah will give them a hasana for each Muslim they pray for. Like say for example, Ya Allah forgive all Muslims in the world. According to this hadith, Allah will give you 1.6 billion hasanat. I can't think of any hadith that gives more hasanat than this. How many people actually say this, has, uh, this hadith? I don't know. Like, frankly, I don't know. So these are easy hasanat, but uh, so we need to uh, pay attention. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Ahabbul a'mali ilallah adwamuha wa inqal. The most beloved deeds to Allah are the ones that are consistent, even if they are very small. Like before you sleep every night, you say dua, a small dua, or you read, call Allah ahad, or ask Allah for forgiveness, something small, takes a few seconds, but if you do it consistently, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds, and forgive our sins, and to forgive our shortcomings, and give us the best in this life, and the best in the life to come. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله